Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Rhoda and I make videos on personal development, community and the world. And today I'm sharing with you my thoughts on turning 28. I turned 28 in June and as usual I took this time to reflect on my life, to reflect on this past year and to see what I want for the next year for myself. Just to give you some context, when I turned 27 last year, I had decided to say yes to all the opportunities that came my way. I had decided to go with the flow in my life and that obviously came with a lot of lessons. On top of that, as you all know, we were hit by the COVID-19 pandemic and that additionally gave me a lot of life lessons. So when I was thinking about what it is that I want to share with you guys, I had a lot. I had basically a lot and I was just going through my journals, I was going through my thoughts, I was just thinking about what is it that overarches all the lessons that I learned. And then I watched a video where the speaker summarized four points and those four points were the exact things that I learned and those were the things that most made an impression on my life. And so I'm borrowing from that speaker the four points but I will share with you what exactly I learned. I will share with you what my experiences were and what he was talking about was fulfilling your calling, fulfilling your purpose, finding that meaning in your life. There's always been a desire within me to find what I was meant to do in this world and that's been an ongoing struggle in my life of trying to find what my contribution to this world will be. And the first point is, if you're looking for your calling, if you're looking for something to give you meaning in your life, if you're looking for your contribution to this world, you need to see with open eyes what's around you. What I realize is quite often we don't really see things as clearly as we're supposed to, especially the things around us. We are so used to so much information coming our way, uh, especially on social media, that we kind of filter things very quickly and easily. What we don't realize is if we truly have a contribution to make to this world, it's going to start with where we are right now. It's not going to be something that is far away. It's going to be something that is right here next to us in our environment, in our community. It's going to start with that. It might not end with that, but it's going to start with that. And for that, we need to be able to see what's going on around us, be open to what's going on around us, be present with what's going on around us. That's something that made me look around my own self. I always tell people whenever I talk, especially when I talk to college students, is look at the things that frustrate you. Look at the things that anger you. Look at the things that break your heart because those are the things that maybe you are called to change. For that, we need to look around ourselves. Look at what's happening around us. Look at how people are living, what they're talking about. Just be very present and that's something that I have learned just because I know that I can sometimes shut down. I have realized I need to be more present. I need to be open to what's going on. I need to be hearing people. I need to be listening. I need to be observing. I need to be taking in what's around me and maybe I'll see the thing that I need to contribute to. The second thing that I've realized about finding your calling or fulfilling your calling is that we also need to go. Seeing, observing from afar is not enough. We need to actually go a little bit closer. We need to understand what's happening, why it is happening, the root cause of why it's happening. And I think I read a quote somewhere and I am not too sure what that quote is. Something on the lines of you can't keep pulling people out of the river. You finally need to go and see why they're falling in in the first place. And that's what it means by going because we can see people falling in and we can think that that's our calling. We need to pull them out of the river and save them. But why are they falling in in the first place? What's happening? What's the root cause of it? And for that, we need to take that step with intention to actually analyze what's going on, why it's happening. That's what I saw happening in the past few months with the Black Lives Matter movement where people started not only seeing some injustice happening, but actually going back and trying to understand why it's happening in the first place so that they can address that. And for that, it takes a little bit of effort. It takes intentionality. This is not only to do with social issues. I think calling is much wider than that. And oftentimes we separate our work and our calling. But many times I realize that it's the same thing. A lot of 
who we are called to be is in the workplace as well because a lot of us are working individuals so that intentionality is something that i learned and want to carry forward with me in the next year as well just because it is sometimes harder it takes effort it takes us moving out of the path the straight path that we think we're on and when we see something happening by the side of the road we don't want to stop we don't want to find out what happened we just want to keep moving but if we want to be contributors to this world if we want to fill that vacuum in our heart that says that is this it that's when you have to actually stop kind of deviate from your path a little bit and find out what's happening and why it's happening the next thing that i learned was if i want to fulfill my calling if i want to contribute to this world i need to feel and as someone who's been called sensitive my whole life i realized that over the years just because i've been called sensitive just because i have had experiences which have hurt me i have become very good at building a wall around my heart i was always having the struggle about how sensitive should i be like you can't be too sensitive that you open yourself up to getting hurt again but you also can't be like cold hearted because you are not feeling anything for anybody so i always had that struggle but over the last year i realized how much i need to work on that how much i need to let myself feel because sometimes we also don't let ourselves feel because there's just too much feeling in the world there's so much happening around us and if we feel for every single thing it drains us honestly and especially people who are emotional who feel more than others it's really draining to feel for every single thing that's happening but what i've learned is how to feel but also how to not let that affect me i'm still learning how to break down those walls that i've built and it's a hard thing to do because it took time to build those walls and those walls were built to protect me and so there's always that inner struggle saying don't <laughs> don't don't do it uh, but i'm learning i'm learning how to let myself feel for the right things let myself feel compassion let myself feel empathy let myself feel the emotions of other people and then channelize it in the right way so that it doesn't end with just the emotion it ends with actually doing something about it the next thing as i said was after feeling was you actually need to do something about it a lot of people think that when you're younger you focus on yourself you focus on your career your life settling down and then you think about other people personally i realized that the more i think about myself the more disillusioned i feel the more confused i am and the more unsatisfied i am the more i think about others it's the exact opposite i think that's a very important realization for all of us to have at whatever age we are the sooner the better that our lives were not meant to be for just ourselves our lives were meant to contribute to the world and the world is people it doesn't matter how young you are it doesn't matter how much money you have right now the biggest thing that we can do is to start the first thing that we can start doing is by using our resources so our resources don't have to be money it can be time one of the things that my family has instilled in me is always give back to the community the second thing that we can do is to give off our talents so all of us have certain talents qualities or uh, strengths and using those for the benefit of others is something that is very important whether it is your organizational skills whether it is your creativity whether it is your project management just anything that you're able to do well is something that you need to use for others and again it's very easy to think about how can i use it to better myself how can i use it to propel myself on a career path how can i use it to become more powerful more influential i always said this and i've said this before in one of my videos as well that whatever we have is not just because of us it's because of so many people before us it's because of the community around us and it's not only because of us and i think we will be remiss in thinking that our lives have been built by us alone obviously you put an effort for your life obviously it's your hard work but at the end of the day when you look at it you don't choose which family you're going to be born into you don't choose which country you're going to be born into you don't choose your parents you don't choose your grandparents you don't choose their professions you don't choose a lot of things 
and so you're just born into this world and many a times a lot of their effort has gone into giving you the life that you have there's a community of people around you that have contributed to make you into the person you are today and you will therefore then be very ungrateful if you don't contribute back to either the same community or just any community in general i always see myself as a steward of things that i have i don't own any of this because any of this can be taken away like that like anything can go wrong even if you look at this covid-19 pandemic situation people thought 2020 was the year they thought it's going to be the best year yet and look at what happened people lost jobs people losing homes people are losing income people are losing family members just everything is out of control so i am very very clear about the fact that all of this is temporary all of this i have for now and if i have it for now i need to use it for the good of people these are the things that i've learned in this past year and these are the things i want to take forward with me i learned that i need to see i need to go i need to feel and i need to do my hope for this next year is i learn as much as possible and i put into practice all that i've learned i hope that this video gave you some insight into my life insight into my thinking and hopefully gave you insight into your own lives as well thank you for watching this video thank you for your time and see you next week Bye.